Now let's look at an idea that's associated with accuracy and precision, and that's multiplying numbers of different types of measurements. For instance, if I take a rectangle and I want to know the area of that rectangle, and that's 2.4 um, centimeters on one side, it was measured with a piece of equipment that was precise, plus or minus a tenth of a mil uh, tenth of a centimeter. Now, if I look at the other side, and it was measured at, oh, let's say 3.8 centimeters, and I want to get the area of this, I'm going to multiply 3.8 times 2.4. That will give me the area. My calculator gives me the area of that to be 9.12 centimeters squared. The problem with that is if you go back and you look at how we made these initial measurements, 2.4 plus or minus a tenth, could it have been 2.5? Yes, it could have been. We guessed it at 2.4. Maybe your neighbor would have guessed it at 2.5. Remember that last digit, it's called a doubtful digit. So if that's the case, let's do the calculation using that one instead. The area using this measurement and that measurement would have been 9.5 centimeters squared. Well, wait a minute, which one of those answers is right? You looked at it one way, your partner got it another way. Because of our obligation of using precision of the equipment, both uh, estimates were correct. That last digit is called a doubtful digit for a reason. It's not that we don't know it's somewhere in there. We just know that it's somewhere between 2 and 3 centimeters, and we estimated it to be 2.4. And your partner estimated it to be 2.5. It doesn't mean either one of you are wrong. It just means you're different. But what it does is it changes the way we look at our answers when we start multiplying or dividing. This answer has uh, 9.5. That one has 9.1. And if you look at the column of where their um, variation is, they're the same number in the 9, but they're different in this column. So the correct answer would be recorded then using two digits as my answer. Now, that one came down calculator-wise in three digits. That one only came down with two digits. But you could have thought of it as 9.50000 if you wanted to. Except we don't do that because we have to go back to the idea of how precise our initial measurements were. So the correct answer in this one would be 9.5 centimeters squared or 9.1 centimeters squared. And I propose the fact that both of those are the same number. They're both the same, but that one known for sure and yet this is the column of my doubtful digit. So it wouldn't matter if you gave me either answer as long as it was based on legitimate input data from um, precise measurements initially. And so we end up with two significant figures coming out of our answer because we started with two significant figures. Now let's extend that just a little bit. Had I made this measurement with a different piece of equipment, Let's say I had something I measured that was more precise, is out to the 100th place, and so I ended up with something like 2.83 centimeters instead. Now, they're not measured with the same equipment. You can see that this one was measured to something plus or minus 1 100th, this is plus or minus 1 tenth. So this is not near as precise. Now, I'm going to erase all this extra information. Now let's do the calculations and see what our calculator gives us on that one. Okay, my calculator now gives me the number 9.192. But you'll remember that this one's still the one that's the least precise. And because of that reason, it doesn't matter what all these extra digits are, that one's precision is offset by that one's imprecision. So we have to discard everything past two significant figures. In that case, we would record our answer as 9.2 centimeters squared. So the simple rule is that if I'm multiplying and dividing, I look at the number that has the least precision, 
and determine its number of significant figures. That one has two significant figures, that one has three. My answer will then have one with the fewest number of significant figures. In this case, it would be recorded with two significant figures. And I follow my rounding rules. The 9 needs to be rounded up into the 1, producing 9.2 is my final answer then, based on the imprecision of that number, not the precision of that number. Now let's vary that a little bit and look at adding and subtracting numbers that have different amounts of precision. If I want to take, to take 2,500, if I look at that number, that's 2,500 plus or minus 100. How do I know? Well, wait a minute. These zeros are considered as insignificant as far as uh, precision goes, but that's plus or minus 100. So if I take that and I want to add to it another number like 453, now that number is plus or minus 1. That was measured with a piece of equipment much more precise than this one. This is kind of like looking at an aerial photograph and estimating the distance between Holden and Fillmore. Okay, you might be able to come up within 100 feet, but you're not going to get any more precise than that. This would be like measuring uh, something that was accurate down to the single foot, like measuring the distance across this room. So in that case, the distance across this room, much more precise, but if I start adding it to a bigger number, we lose that in the plus or minus value of this one. So mathematically, I'm going to add that together. But my final answer is still dictated by the fact that that's plus or minus. So that column right there is the last column in my decimal numbers that is, has any precision to it. That's the doubtful digit up on this number, so it becomes the doubtful digit in the decimal place on this number. So my correct answer would be recorded as what? Well, you look at that and you're going to say it's got to be uh, 2953 to two significant figures but what it's going to end up is 3, 0, 0, 0, but that is the place of significance. One of the ways we tend to use zeros and show that they're significant instead of just ignoring them is to put it into scientific notation. So we would record that as 3.0 times 10 to the third. Now that shows, because we're now using a zero behind a decimal, that it's precise. So we now have two significant figures here. Now you're going to say, well, couldn't I have just ignored it and said, well, why not just put it as 2,900? Oddly enough, if you ignored your uh, significant, excuse me, if you ignored your rounding rules, that would be acceptable. 2,900 and 3,000 are the same number based on our other discussion. But if I'm going to follow my rounding rules, this is the appropriate answer for the solution. This one is plus or minus 100, just like that one is plus or minus 100. So kind of to recap, your rule for adding and subtracting significant figures is you look at the decimal position of the least precise number, and that has to become the decimal position of the doubtful digit in your answer. And then you just convert the rest of them all to zeros following your rounding rules, either up or down.